Can we have a conversation real quick? I want to have a conversation um, about identity politics and my white friends, particularly my white bros, my white comrades, male comrades. So during the primaries, I was, and yeah, it was me and a couple of other people, um, a small group of us who identified the game that was being played on the Democratic Party, people on the left, um, the identity politics game. Um, and uh, you know, I identified it in this YouTube social media space. The person who identified it probably best and first would be Professor Adolph Reed Jr. And we collaborated and talked about it several times, but it's the weaponization of identity politics. And what we mean by the weaponization of identity politics is using the identity of someone as a buffer to protect them from their horrible politics. The perfect example would be Cory Booker. Any criticism of a corporate Democrat like Cory Booker, who's so corporate that he's willing to betray his own party to defend Bain Capital and to defend Mitt Romney back in 2012, and even now would do things to defend corporate interests at the behest of his own party, but any criticism of him about that from a white person or from a non-black person was instantly met with cries of racism. Likewise, women, you know, you see any time a man made any type of uh, argument against Hillary Clinton, we were instantly labeled as a sexist. If it was a black woman, you'd be labeled a racist and a sexist. And it was a perfect tool to silence the debate that was burgeoning inside of the left wing of American politics. That includes some neoliberal Democrats and progressives and socialists and communists, so on and so forth. There was a burgeoning conversation that was halted, and it was, it, was, it was intentionally halted by the weaponization of identity politics. And we identified that pretty early on. We identified some of the leading purveyors of that technique, uh, seeing that what they were doing, using a black person to stop the conversation on class because they wanted to protect interests like Hillary Clinton, they wanted to protect their corporate interests, they wanted to protect their jobs, and so, of course, it would be easy to get someone like Joanne Reed to, to use weaponized identity politics to stifle the conversation on class and want to limit it to race, but not race where it intersects class, just race. Not poverty in the African-American community, just the African-American community. Not poverty uh, that's attached to, femin to women in America, just, just women. The Mc, uh, I, I forgot who, who coined this, but the McFeminism. Right, or corporate feminism. My friend uh, Anoa Changa uh, actually said that brilliantly. Uh, corporate feminism doesn't trickle down. And so this is what we identified in the primaries. This is what we identified as a problem that needed to be addressed. But now, as with everything else, the pendulum has swung back very far in the other direction because I've noticed some friends, I've noticed quite a few people, not even some, not even my friends, I have a perch I do have a perch where I'm privy to a lot of conversations that most people are not privy to because if I tweet one thing, there are about 300 people arguing in my mentions. Maybe not 300, but about 75 people arguing in my mentions and I'm able to listen. And I've seen over and over and over again, I've seen probably well-meaning progressive bros giving people who weaponize identity politics the very ammunition that they need to hit them with weaponized identity politics. In other words, I see white dudes saying some racist and sexist, even if it's a microaggression, just saying, just, just having this condescending tone and, and not even just condescending tone, but this, this bitter, a, a bitter backlash against women Black people, particularly black women. And I'm sitting back and I'm looking and I'm like, on the merits, I probably agree with you, but why do you have to sound and approach this in a way that's going to give them everything they need to call you a racist, sexist, and stifle the conversation? I'm sorry, I just come from the school of thought that I do not give my opponents the weapons they need to destroy me.
And I've seen this time and time and time again. And, 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 and this is me accrediting it to not understanding that what you're saying will be used against you. This is the benevolent interpretation of it. Because as I watch it and I, as, that I, as I experience and I see the vitriol and I see the, the anger and I see the bitterness that comes attached to it, I have an alternate view of it. The alternate view of it is you got a problem. The alternate view of it is you have this anger you have this deeply seated anger against women, this deeply seated anger against black women that causes you to lash out against them in a way that I do not see you lashing out against other people who are doing the same damn thing. So I don't care how you take it. The benevolent interpretation, which is, well, you're upset about something and you're not realizing that the words that you're using are going to be used against you. Therefore, you are undermining the progressive movement by giving people who are you already know they weaponize identity politics. You're giving them the ammunition to weaponize it. That's the benevolent view. The other side of the equation is you have to understand that when you come for a black person and you slam them openly about being black and saying that that's just the, an excuse to protect them, you do have to understand that that triggers a response, even from a person like me who fully knows damn well that this is, this is a p identity politics game. But what you cannot do is expect me to sit by and other people like me to just sit by and say, yeah, it is an identity politics game, so I'm gonna be silent as you have the most bitter and condescending tone, vitriolic tone towards a black person or a woman or some anyone. I'm not sure what you expect, but you can't expect us to just sit here and be quiet about it. And so I'm coming from it and from this from two vantage points. Number one is if you want to help progressivism, do us a favor and just stay out of the identity politics conversation. Make your points and stop blaming it on, oh, nobody's gonna criticize her because she's a black woman. You know, that's some microaggressive shit that in real life, if you said that next to me, it probably wouldn't end up well. But in political life, it's, it's definitely not gonna end up well because you give them the so-called evidence that they need to further the narrative of the white dude bros. So make your points, say what you have to say, but realize every time you journey over into, oh, nobody's gonna listen to us because we're white and we can't say nothing about black people because they black, realize that you are undermining everything that you're trying to accomplish by giving them the exact ammunition that they need to weaponize identity politics. You're not helping us, long story short, you're hurting us. Leave it to the professionals. Leave it to the professionals who understand that you can't dismiss identity. You can't shit on identity. Identity politics is real. I, your identity is real. And it's not something that we are gonna sit back no matter how much we agree on X, Y, and Z. We're not gonna sit back and let you destroy somebody based on their race and, or let you attack somebody uh, indirectly based on their race and their identity. We're not. Make your points. Lead the identity conversation to the professionals so that we can forward progressivism without giving them the ammunition they need to further the weaponization of identity politics. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog, join the progressive army, and support The Benjamin Dixon Show. <laughs> If you like this episode, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Consider becoming a Patreon. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin Dixon show.